I figured out early on what selective attention was without knowing what it was. My focus couldn't be in two places at once. Although I could perceive many things at once, it's almost multi-tracking. My idea of my perception of all this was something that applied to everybody. So that led me to the appreciation of the scientific method. And here we are. Hello. <laughs> Oh, this is uh, such a good day. So for those who don't know who this character is in front of me, Mike Mangini is a Grammy Award winning drummer and composer, current drummer of the King of the Jungle progressive metal band Dream Theater. He has also played for bands and artists such as Annihilator, Extreme, James Labrie, and Steve Bay. And of course, before joining Dream Theater, Mike was a faculty member at Berklee College of Music for, I think, 11 years? 10. 10. Okay, fair enough. You can count 11 if it's the summer before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so between 20, 2002 and 2005, he set five world's fastest drummer records, which is very impressive. He has appeared on Discovery Channel in the show Time Warp, Time Warp uh, displaying some of his skills. But, but of course, you know him because of Dream Theater and you know him because he's a magnificent drummer. But he is here not because of that, believe it or not. So No. No, 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 no. So Mike... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm here because of these. Exactly. So Mike designed Rhythm Knowledge and the Grid, which is a behavioral change system to help himself learn to be a better player and to be a better teacher. So Rhythm Knowledge and the Grid are based on principles of cognitive science, software engineer, and natural laws. And Mike, of course, tested them on himself, his students, and anyone willing to try out learning something they previously did not know. So to talk about his career, the philosophy and science behind his method, and of course about Dream Theater, otherwise people would strangle me, I have the absolute pleasure of having here on Talking Brains the one and only Mr. Mike Mancini. Hello, Mike. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> nice to see you, Andres. Look at that. I even have the goods right here. Uh, I can see that. I have one good here because this Take is the up. one. I have the grid here. And that's the one I don't have handy. Yeah, which <laughs> so is good. There you go. Perfect. So let's start by acknowledging the elephant in the room. Congratulations for the Grammy Award for Best Metal Performance for the song The Alien on Dream Theater album The View from the Top of the World. First thing first, how does it feel being recognized as a driving force of prog metal after so many years? I think this was the third nomination. Third for the band, uh, I think it's my fifth or sixth. I don't, okay. I don't remember because <laughs> I, I had a couple with Steve Vai. Um, so uh, the, the feeling is, is one of um, relief, I suppose. And, and the reason is, look, it, it's, it's one thing to have ideas and, um, and think that perhaps, okay, this is, this is the right way to do things or whatever. Uh, but when it's acknowledged, it's, it's kind of cool. And one of the m real important differences for this Grammy uh, win versus non-wins um, is, you know, you, you never know with the categories and how they do things and, ah, you know, name recognition, wh whatever it is that, that uh, has to do with whatever those components are that lead to that happening. I know with this one, um, my fondest memory is being with everybody and just offering, you know, the idea that we should go and play like we are 18 and we don't care what anyone says or thinks or did, nothing just let's go and be crazy and have fun and so uh i walked into the room and, and played the skeleton of the, the alien on the drums and the keyboard player jordan was in there and started you know writing to it and then our guitarist john came in and bassist john came in and we just like immediately you know started going together because we 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 uh, we wrote that album um, together, which is different than anyone bringing ideas or anything like that. And uh, it, that's a good feeling because, you know, not one of us went too far with anything. You know what I'm saying? So if I, 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 I played that, you know, uh, maybe you want to hear one of the beats that I played at first. Go ahead. All right, because this might come in handy later because it uh, has to do with the MIT study and polyrhythms and the wiring 
of the brain and no one shows up yeah. to the world with this area wired apparently so anyway uh i'll play that for you <laughs> ready go ahead it's, it's so it's it's based on uh three groupings of notes that add up five plus five plus seven it's five five seven five 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 seven so what i did is i decided to put that in a different framework you know so my mind has to you know for anyone it doesn't know anything about what i'm talking about but just listens to music is here's a, a simple beat one two three four one three four one two three one so i'm counting the four and each of the four beats has three notes so there's 12 total notes and if we call them eighth notes 12 eight but i played that five plus five plus seven over here like this so i like starting this discussion out with that and it's just unplanned as you know we're just we're just improvising here but uh well that's what the grid is about mm -hmm. but um the, the thing is that you know i i figured out early on the, uh, the, the, what selective attention was without knowing what it was, without having studied it first. I knew that my, my, my focus couldn't be in two places at once, although I could perceive many things at once, including the, uh, the reality of audio outside of me, the reality of the audio in my mind, because I'm hearing my own voice in my head. I'm also hearing music in my head. It's almost multi-tracking. And I'm doing the same thing visually, which is going to probably open up in this whole discussion. So I realized all those things. I just didn't know that, okay, my idea of my perception of all this was something that, was, that applied to everybody. So that led me to the appreciation of the scientific method. And, you know, it's really there to say, look, at, if this thing is true, it has to work 100% of the time for 100% of the people and all of that stuff. And it can't. It can't be exceptions, although we know there are anomalies, especially with the brain, right? But yeah. um, so that really encompasses what led to the Grammy uh, and just people being themselves and working together. But we also have the ability to uh, manage such a rhythm and such a thing, which is what makes the band, quote, a prog band or, or, or progressive. It's just it's just not straight, straight subdivisions that you don't have to think about. So. Um, the idea of understanding what that is, well, that's, that's what this is all about. And yep. yeah, we're going to get there. Yeah. And it's like, well, we won that. It's like, oh, you know what? That, that feels nice. And having these books work for everybody, it's the same feeling for me. Every class that I teach, when someone that had no idea about something and had no hope, no hope of playing, I, I, forget about it. All of a sudden, like, oh my gosh. That's all it is. It's just it's how they're perceiving it. That's what was involved, and I can't believe that um, you know it. It that type of a beat. That's like the craziest one we <laughs> we've ever done, and it, the song is like it sounds chaotic, and all of a sudden it 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 won. But it won for best performance. Won for best performance. This wasn't song of the year or best song or best. You know, it was best performance in that uh, uh, the metal rock genre. So. There it is. Yeah. I want to um, try to, let's say, um, emphasize the two, I would say, parts of Mike's soul, in my view, from my modest view as a, you know, as a neuroscientist. One is, but basically, you love music and you're touring all the time and you were in Rock in Rio a few months ago and you're, you're basically, your soul is, is in the music. When you're playing, your soul is in the music. But at the same time, you have this scientific mind that is, to me, it's amazing because as I told you once and I repeat it here and I want to repeat it here, you are a cognitive scientist. You don't know. You don't have maybe the degree, but you are. You are a massive, massive brain in that regard. Um, Thank you. And I want to I wanna, I, I wanna make an example. So basically in May, you were visiting the CERN, right? The European Center for Nuclear Research. Yeah. So... It's paradoxical to me, but it's not paradoxical at the same time that you, you can be so well recognized, so well known as a musician, as a drummer, as a performer. But at the same time, there is a, a, an underlying, complete different, you know, stream that uh, is feeding everything you do from your 
teaching, from your music, from everything you perform that is based on the scientific method. Do you have any comments? And I have a, a very specific question later on, but if you want to make any comments, just go ahead. Well, that's uh, just, just, to, uh, just to back it up. Um, I didn't, you know, just go visit the place. Um, as a band, we were invited and um, I, I didn't realize it, but the, uh, the top people there were fans and fans <laughs> of mine. So they, they knew about me. And what, what that meant um, was that I was able to visit with the heads of uh, four or five areas in there and have a discussion because, uh, uh, for example, when I met with Jeff, who's the, the head of the antimatter, he, um, he and his colleague um, produced produce some antimatter and it's like pretty serious and I, I I'm not well read with all the stuff but I'm read enough it interests me because when I get into a discussion and here's the point I, I I try to immediately get a picture in my mind a bird's eye view a perspective on when people speak to me it's like well where did that come from how do you know that well where does that fit into the picture so my mind immediately starts to I just show you I mean even if it doesn't translate in this in this setting but um one of the most important parts of my offerings with this first book being about you know it's like it's practice skills but it's about behavioral change you i'm i'm, I'm coming in this area and on my drums i either intend to change my uh, uh, to improve my skills or not and that's a change that's a behavioral change it's the, it's the way that i do things changes so I realized the key to that was having a perspective on what I am and how I work. So to this, so when I go to CERN, I, I, it doesn't mean anything. No, you can't even see what I'm showing you here, but it's a pyramid. I see a pyramid. And it's a pyramid. And it just, it just shows a line of logic, a line of logic from the understanding of the mind and body, and it separates the mind and body and the things that occur. But at the top of the pyramid, I put spirit, I put will, because you learn all this stuff, right? And it actually changes your will. It changes your interest. And it's a big cycle. It just so sometimes the you know, the more you learn about something, the more excited you get. Um, and it doesn't matter where you start, really. All that matters is that that cycle seems to be the truth. And so my being invited there and having discussions, that was my that's my line of thinking. It's not that I read something about uh hydrogen versus another element you know, all, all these things and I, oh and i know i know the math of it it's, just, it's not that it's like well, what is the stuff how does it work how do things derive from one another um and what is involved in that process which early on when i didn't know it i was asked to teach and i didn't want to teach because i felt a sense of responsibility like if i'm going to direct and influence this person i'm responsible for them so i don't know what i'm doing so uh, as I started to take students, I, was, I started to open up and study about the human memory and how it worked and why can I do things and other people can't, or why is it other people can play things and I can't yet do them. So there you go. That just explains the kind of you know, I intent that I have and how I keep getting my mind to work to get a picture of things. So on that regard, so basically let, let's, let's talk about Mike, the, the cognitive scientist first. Okay. So you, you were mentioning that you use the scientific method for approaching and validating most of your findings, um, and you test them. You have been testing all of that on yourself and, of course, on your many, many students that you've been teaching for the last, I don't know, how many years so far? 25 plus, two, two dozen years. Yeah. yeah. Those principles uh, that on which you base your extraordinary style can be found on the publications that you have over there, which are... Rhythm Knowledge Volumes 1, 2, and 3, and of course, on the grid, on this DVD. So before getting into what Rhythm Knowledge is, I would like to know, and I think we were discussing this uh, in May in London as well, where does the interest in science come from? So how did you get interested in, in the cognitive aspect of science and the workings of the brain? What's the story behind it? The story behind it is, again, just having this simple perspective uh, leading me to the question, what am I? What am I? You know, how do I work? This is it, it, incredibly important, not only for me to go in a room and say, well, I don't want to waste my time. I'm practicing certain things. I have to keep practicing over and over again. 
I'm, I'm slaving, I'm sweating, I'm making sacrifices in my life, and then I, I learn these things on the drums that are able to hit a certain way, uh, or it's a speed, really. And then if I don't practice and keep up, well, it, 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 it disappears and it's twice as hard sometimes for me to get it back. It's like the mountain gets steeper. It's like, this can't be true. Something's wrong. So that, that's what led me to wanting to know is I don't want to do that. And I figured, you know what? I don't think anyone else wants to do that either. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, to put all this work in and then not retain it. So my first question was, how do I retain information? How, why does it? Why does memory work? What is it? You know, I just started picking up books and just based on their titles. I didn't know what I was doing. I just saw a book. It <laughs> looked like, all right, uh, this 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 ought to work. It's a human memory or something on the brain. And then you you know, I, I bought certain ones that really didn't do what I was looking for, but I was able to extract something out of it. Yeah. And then I went on to another one. I, again, I didn't know, and I had to get a perspective. Like, oh, wait a minute. I need to purchase some books that um, uh, are in layman's terms and that explain, um, I guess, the different modules that we have or how everything works together. So anyway, that was my interest is what, what am I? How do I work? And now, I, I had a simple conclusion uh, about everyone else, which is, well, everyone else is a person too. If you look outside and there's a certain kind of a bird that's uh, local to you, here around Boston, we have crows, we have robins, we have cardinals. And, well, every one of those male cardinals or female cardinals, they look the same. How did that happen? It's not like it's just blah. It just a blob came out. It's like, no, there's something going on. There's something happening. There's, there's, there's something being directed and leading from A to B to C to D. So I'm like, well, how how do these people relate to me? It's like, well, they have a thumb and four fingers and, and two arms and two legs. And their brains work in general a certain way. Although um, I, I a short way into starting to read, to read books on this, I found, well, there were anomalies. Some people have anomalies with their brains. Like, okay, well, I'm going to gear my stuff to a, most people. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to be concerned about that. And I'm. And I'm straight up, very, very straight up with everyone that studies with me, saying, "Look, at, I understand there's a possibility that something else, uh, something could be wired differently, or whatever. But let's find it. Let's get to it, and just go with these basic principles first. So it was a way for me to improve and a way for me to relate to people, based on simple. At the end of the day, I have to make complex things simple. That's it. You know, we're people. What are I? What are we? How do we work? Yeah, that's what that's what did it. That's great. And on that note, I think, um, what's your opinion on, on basically people that might say, okay, well, Mike is a prodigy. I mean, he has a talent. I will never be able of playing remotely as close as he does because I'm not Mike. Um, how? this way of thinking and this methodology can address that well it's that's easy to do that but you ha I, I we have to have a a simple disclaimer at the beginning i think which yeah. is that the results that an artist produces is uniquely them when you put it all together because that ultimately that, that one person makes decisions whether or not they even know a decision has been made, but a decision has to be made before you send the signal to your hand to go boop, hit, hit, you know, boop, 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 hit this, hit that, do this, look over here. This will, that's why will, it, it always comes back to that. You're making decisions. But all right, so outside of that, that the results are going to be unique to each person, I have just been able to teach <laughs> anybody how to do what I do, save speed. See, speed is a different thing. In other words, uh, if you just watch me do this, a person can understand, oh, you moved your right and left hands back and forth and you whipped around the drum and we measured it at um, at 200 BPM or something, uh, beats a minute. So, I mean, my, I got to give you something that's like you chew into, right? Yeah. That's probably what it was, a little faster than that. That's not that hard to understand intellectually, but to physically do it, now, I could teach someone that doesn't have a clue what drumming is. I could teach them what I just did. This is what I just show you. And that's, a, that's, what's, uh, that's usually what, uh, what teachers do to teach people, but it doesn't teach them. 
Okay. In other words, I could show you what it is. Well, there were this many notes back and forth, and this many notes, and this many notes. Great. Um, but I started to find out the most valuable thing to communicate was how. How does that work? And then, no matter who came to me, they understood. Oh, okay, okay, all right. All right I, what I have to do is sit a certain way. I have to lift my stick up. I have to flex this muscle, flex that, pick, strike and pick the stick up. So now I got to send him for 30 minutes a night for six weeks to just strike and pick up, strike and pick up, strike and pick up. Because my speed comes from the upstroke, which is the, uh, the opposite of what the world thought. It's like, okay, well, if you're going to make, well, so you're going to make your hands go back and forth, go practice making your hands go back and forth. And I knew that's not, I knew it wasn't enough. I absolutely knew it. And, you know, somehow I've been given the gift of problem solving. That's a greater gift than, you know, what I'll do on the drums because what if I did something else with my life? You know, yeah. I, I think it still have the same essence to me. Yeah. That's the scientific mind. Yeah. So um, I say, well, I started to teach how, which is why this book is, says here, it's easy when you know how. This one is, and I'm not just we're like doing a silly book promo. I'm just trying to communicate. You do, no, nobody wants the books. Don't get them. But it's, it's easy when you know how. This, this is not really uh, a book for just drummers or just musicians. But this one says it's easy when you know what. Because now it says, okay, here's all these systems. Go and do these things. Because anything and everything that's possible funnels down into these. And it, it can't escape it. That's where that scientific method comes in. And this latest book of mine says, okay, well, you know what? Based on these two books, here's an advanced exercise system on what to do when you're in a mind. It's, 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 that's a whole other level and discussion that we need to get to. But yeah. um, essentially, you know, to answer your question, yeah, people can do what I do, and I've taught them to do it. And, they, and, and some have, uh, have surpassed me like it's physically in a short of a uh, short amount of time. And mm. in, in other words, they've accomplished in two or three years what it took me 20, 15 wow. or 20. Wow. Well, only because I wasn't doing the right things for a long time. You know, and when I say that many years, it's because um, I, I started performing by the time I was five. I might have been slightly before, meaning being taken by my family with a small drum set to to a wedding reception and another one and another one of, of our family and my drums being put on stage and my being forced to play, which of course I hated and I cried my eyes out every time. Yeah. I even ran up, I even ran, I even ran, <laughs> I ran out of the, I ran, I ran out of the Buttercup Lounge in Fitchburg, Massachusetts and all my cousins chased me down the street. <laughs> oh my God. And uh, my mother, you know, she had to get me out of a tree. I climbed the tree. <laughs> I didn't want to play because even at that age, what's interesting is I knew that I wasn't who I'm supposed to be. I wasn't good enough yet. I was, I've always had that vision and that calling. Like, I can see what I need to do. I just can't do it. So, oh my gosh, I just can't go on stage and perform. Everyone will think I'm terrible. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you know, so I mean, that's me. And that's, that's, that's going to determine that I play something a certain way like this. Um, Whatever. I just spit that out. So can I teach that? Yeah. yeah. Someone else learn it and do it? Yes. Will someone else play it with the exact dynamics and inflections and swing between the notes? Never. I don't think it's, well, it's, it's highly unlikely because each person does have a physicality to them, but you can get close enough to make it sound pretty close. So Yeah. That's an extremely hopeful message because um, I, well, I kind of played the drums by myself. We had a band when we were just a teenager called Carpe Diem, and it was amazing. And I was always surprised by the fact that most of the people that I was thinking they were good drummers, they were exceptionally good at telling how magnificent they were and how impossible for you was to become something like that. And that's, I would say, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna generalize, but it's probably 80% of the great ones are a bit like that. I'm speaking for myself, but um, so when I so when I when I learned that you had a method, you Mike Mangini had a method that was kind of outlying there in a bold way, putting out the fact that okay, I can play maybe 
similarly to you if I do the work and if I follow yeah. the method, that to me was like, oh my God, what's going on? Is this a hoax? So you're exceptional in that regard as well, because you're sharing, you're sharing the way, which is not a common thing to see. Yeah, because I'm secure. Yeah. I'm not afraid that, you know, if I give my secrets away that I, it makes me look worse or I will lose my job or jobs or whatever. I don't even think that way. I just, because I, I also understand the uniqueness of each individual, uh, but I'm giving people the chance, you know, um, and it, if I'm in a contest and I've been in a lot of them, a lot of auditions, <laughs> um, my book is there. If people want to know my, my playbook, there it is. Go buy it. But yeah. you still... You know, uh, this, I don't know. We'll see what happens at the end of the day, but I've done well so far. You know, and it's interesting because I just held my first uh, Zoom class with the ultimate stickings. And my initial, uh, my, you know, my opening monologue, so to speak, when everyone signed on and everything, was that this is a class about hope. This is about hope. And you said it. It's no joke. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's get into rhythm knowledge. Um, All right. I was thinking of how to approach this because the method is so rich and the ramifications are so vast that I really want to make justice out of the, out of the, out of the interview. So I want to start very simple. And this is something that I usually do with everyone by asking, what is your method not about? So if someone immediately wants to know what is not about. What rhythm knowledge is not about is the same thing I'm not about. I don't tell anybody who to become. We make behavioral changes via habit. Things have to be habitual. You've got to repeat them. You can't escape that this poor body of ours is sitting here going, hey, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you know, I mean, there's no brain in each finger. There's no brain in each limb. That's how I, later on, we can discuss interdependence on the drums because there's no independence. My arm's not floating in the air playing by itself. When, when my leg is, I, I don't know, they, dep they depend on the CPU here. Anyway, my method is not about my telling anybody who to become as a musician. That is the precise design of the second book, which has five systems and when you learn any one of these systems, and I, this one, I say you, a non-musician, a non-musician, th these systems in here aren't about technique on the drums to become a drummer or technique on the guitar to be a get better guitarist. The systems are about learning rhythm, which that applies to human beings. So the, anything in here can be executed with two bare hands. Right? So if I describe rhythms, and I use a rhythm that most people are aware of, just um, a beat, and the beat has four notes of it inside it like this. One, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. So if I describe that the way I did, and I know, oh, wait a minute. Now, if I'm to teach what that really is all about and how to, and how to uh, I guess, own it uh, to anyone, well, I have to talk about the breakdown of it. In other words, if there are four notes being striked, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, there are 16 possible permutations of any four-note grouping. There's not hitting anything. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There is, is hitting all four of those. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then there's hitting three out of four, which just so I can put the seed out there is part of um, why I was able to whip through your tests instantaneously without knowing what they were. <laughs> and I was able to recognize, I mean, I was able to recognize it in milliseconds. That's yeah. not normal, yeah. but it's not me because anyone that knows and studied this would be able to do the same thing pretty closely. Yeah, the tests that Mike is referring to are some uh, uh, very interesting tests that we're actually doing on him. That, uh, yeah, one day I will let you know more about it, but we're, we're actually doing science on brains, of Mike's brain, which is good. Yeah, 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 so it just ties in. But anyway, so I could say, well, if you hit 
just the third note, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This process of using your voice to count and then uh, striking that instrument on only one of the four beats is not that easy. So people can get caught up and confused simply with that process. So I found that, oh, if I give them a visual understanding of it, it seems to work every single time. Now, this is an interesting concept because what if somebody is blind? That opens up the philosophy that, that you know, if we go old school Plato, you know, that everything is shape and form first. You don't have to see something to perceive the shape of it. It's just eyesight is just one way to do it. And it makes it simple. But you can perceive shape by sound. You have the stereo image. You still yeah. can get shape that way. And by feeling, I can feel that my right hand is up in this corner, down in that corner, across in this upper corner like a square the four points of a square I, I can feel i can feel shape <laughs> so anyway my, my my point is that in describing the method and the approach well it's like well i'm going to use binary zeros and ones zeros and ones to to uh to show that if it's a zero don't hit anything if it's a one hit which is different than music notation, because I'll show you, this can be confusing for people. Yeah, it's confusing to me. So, all right, so if I show that, and if there's a, a non-musician watching this, they're gonna be like, um, uh, okay, thanks, buddy, uh, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, no, thank you, no. You're not interested in this, because now you gotta learn a whole nother language. It's like you and I using different audio software i don't feel like i i, I use pro tools yeah. i'm not going to learn the other ones i don't feel like it so people don't know this language and not going to learn it so i'm like i i got i got to cut to the chase here um and i used zeros and ones so my way to teach that to a non-musician is don't do anything with your hand when you see a zero, zero. but with your mouth just go da so you're going da 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 in your mind, you can hear yourself counting one, two, three, four. Just say it out loud and just strike on the third one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Great. Now, there are 16 permutations of four. Go home and learn all those things with each of your limbs. Keep yourself busy, and I'll see you next week. <laughs> That's like, get them done. So anyway, that is an example um, of, of you know, my, my, my software engineering past. It's like, wait a minute. That's, well, zeros and ones. This is going to be great. That's going to relate to anyone and everybody. You know, not everyone's going to know music notation, and not everyone's going to want to hit L's and R's or lefts and rights. I don't want to complicate it. I don't want to confuse and use words that people don't know, but I'm sure in the scientific community, most people know what an array is. It's just a, it's rows and columns. Yeah. And so as much as there are uh, 16 permutations of two voices, meaning you hit or you don't hit, 16 permutations with four, there are 256 permutations with eight. So yeah. one of the things is, wow, this is like crazy with it. I'm writing a book going, I don't want to take up space in the book writing all those out. And in my mind, I visualized an array. Yeah, I can see it. A beautiful array with rows and columns. Yeah, so it's like, okay, do permutation one yeah. with permutation one. Skip a register. Do permutation one with permutation two. Permutation one with permutation three. In fact, do permutation one with all 16. Then switch to permutation two. Do permutation two with all 16. Permutation three with all 16. Great. Now you're eventually covering all 256 possibilities in a very efficient way. And you're developing a new way to visualize, which, of course, that's kind of deep. And not everyone thinks that much when they play music. But... Yeah. <laughs> Look at if I am going to publish something, uh, I am going to make a claim, and I'm going to claim this. If if you want to learn this kind of a thing as a musician, this method will guarantee it, and it will not fail. It cannot fail. That's a big claim to make. So it is a, a lot went into it, and a lot of testing had to happen. So basically, volume one outlines how. A person inputs, stores, and recalls information via a very, very specific use of the five senses, right? Yes, very specific. It's directed. You, you're processing. You're taking in information. You're spitting out information in an environment. Yes. It's a very cutting-edge idea in neuroscience. So 
but you you wrote this stuff ages ago. So how how do you come up with the idea of first of all thinking about the census as something that you can layer, that you can create like a rank, that you can prioritize some of them, and second, how can that be used for learning what you do? What you do? Well, one of the ways that I was able to discern certain things that weren't written about, that weren't in any cognitive science books, that weren't in any books, uh, was to get a perspective and to ask questions. You know, what is this? How does it work? What is it? How does it work? What's, what is the nature of this thing? What is its nature? That is, you find a lot of, you find truth. You find truth when you take that approach. It's a simple approach, but it's not so easy to get all the information. That's why we have science and it takes it takes forever and it takes decades of developing technology just to look in a smaller space oh, yes. or to try or to try to get the temperature closer to absolute zero yeah yeah how did i do that i did this and I, i'll show you uh, and it's interesting when i when my co-writer frank dolan uh who's a student of mine co-wrote this with me he, he passed away and um um before uh yeah Long before that, when he was studying with me, um, he knew about this. And when it came time to publish the book, he had suggested that I not use st st drawings of stick figures because you might want to. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. no I, yeah. I have to put, I have to put my original drawings because uh, it, it, it kind of shows simplicity mm -hmm. it's just like and it, this is for anybody and everybody that i don't know all the answers i can't come up with some fancy thing and have it all perfect it's like no 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 you just check this out so i you asked a question it's like what birthed all this is this this picture did it i just drew a picture of myself as a stick figure okay i see stickings good yeah yeah, yeah. so it's a stick figure on a kit and um What's around the stick figure are the environments, a studio, an audition, uh, you know, a practice room. These are the environments. I'm in a studio now. That's the, I, but there are certain components in this environment that are not in other environments. So it's like, let me give you an, an idea because you're like, well, how does it work? Did you just say, well, what am I? Where am I? How does, how does all this stuff work? So in addition to having to figure out how does a person process information, okay, it's through your senses, I'm able to say, well, what doesn't happen? Like that question you asked, what doesn't my system do? My system doesn't tell anybody who to become. You put it together yourself. You take all the pieces like a puzzle and you form who you want to be. Um, so what, what, what doesn't happen for musicians is we don't process taste and smell. It has nothing to do with this. And even no matter how hungry I get, I'm not going to eat this drumstick and I'm not going to you know, lick a symbol or something. Yeah. I hope not. It's like, oh, it's, oh, it's, I know it's my drum set. Let me, let me bond with my kid. <laughs> oh, the sweet smell of 14 inch new beat Zildjian hi-hats. <laughs> yes. Sure. You know, no, 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 no. So you're processing stuff. And I, I, I drew that picture and I'm like, well, how do I work? What do I do? Just give me, uh, let me give you a quick example of the difference in environments, which can lead to then a person choosing who they want to become because some people want to exist in the studio environment. Okay. Well, there's an, envi there's an environment called an audition. It's called an audition. And the first <laughs> audition I had with my school band as a percussionist, now you're going to understand, you know, my teacher sent me in saying, okay, well, you're going to win the top chair in the whole state. There's nobody that's going to come close. It's not, it's not going to happen. And now technically on that level, maybe he was right, maybe not. I will, I, well, I'll never know. Well, I'll never know because that year I went in and I botched the audition and I haven't botched one since. Mm. Haven't botched. I was a, a, just barely a teenager. I just turned 13. Wow. I, cause I, and I, I was, uh, it was over and uh, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> there were some discussions with the faculty and they're like, well, but something went wrong with the kid because that's just that what happened in there was not normal. Yeah. yeah that's like yeah. something must have broke. He must have like broke. <laughs> well, here's what happened. I tried to evaluate what happened. I remembered that I was thinking the wrong thing at the, at the worst possible time. What that means is I found out that what we think and when we think it is the key to success in progressing. 
it, it's not don't think. Trust me. Trust me. I have looked for the switch to turn myself off from me, especially if I can't get to sleep at night. Or all these thoughts come in, and it's like the devil and the angels. Like, get out of my head. I don't want to be thinking that. I'm going to shut this off. Yeah. I'm shutting it off. I don't want these thoughts. You can't shut yourself off from thinking, you know, just even if you're like, ah, uh, you know, you're meditating, it's all dark. Darkness is a real thing. So no one is shutting themselves off. You got to think. It's what to think and when to think it. So I remember in that audition, instead of, looking at the sheet music and just playing the part that I probably could have played with my left foot, right? And it's really, seriously, uh, on, a, on a little pedal. Um, and then I botched it with these hands of mine. It's because I remember I was thinking, I looked up and the adjudicator had this really weird shirt on and I was wondering about what I was wearing and I'm thinking, do I look bad? And the <laughs> mistake... Oh my gosh, I made a mistake. What's he thinking that I just made this mistake? Oh my gosh. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I just made a mistake. Instead of going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Instead of thinking that, which is my job at the time, I'm all over the place. It's yeah. like it's like if a if if a if a soccer player's gotta do a penalty kick, right? What is going through his mind when he's getting ready to kick the ball? When you have fans that basically, if you miss it, are going to try to find your family and you know, yeah, yeah. tar and feather you for the rest of your life <laughs> if you don't score or if you're goalie and you let the thing in. And so that, if that stuff is in these athletes' minds, they're not going to succeed. Yeah. Oh, I realized what to think and when to think it, and that came from drawing a little picture going, well, in, in, an, uh, in a studio, what happens? In an audition, what happens? Well, in an audition, what are the components of an audition? Well, the drum set, the sticks, the wood. The... Now, wait a minute. There are other people in this environment, and they affect what you think and feel. Yeah. You've got to account for them as components. So in subsequent auditions for me in my life, which number approximately close to about 60, it's at least in the 50s, when you count all of my school band auditions and then auditions for bands and things. So um, mm -hmm. I was aware during these auditions what to be aware of. <laughs> and so I, I was able to succeed in them because I'm like, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I'm focused. I'm like, I'm going to count this and hit that and do this. And I'm not going to worry about what anyone thinks or what shirt I have on or any any of that stuff. Yeah. So the principle here, if, if I if I get it right, is that you're kind of reducing the uncertainty, the potential uncertainty of a specific context by thinking of every single possibility that you might encounter. If you thought about it before getting into the room, the uncertainty and the anxiety and everything that is related to that just drops and that enables you to focus on what it's needed, right? Yes, that's exactly right. So um, the question to me is basically, okay, you know what you need to do, you sit on the drums, and then the anxiety kicks in and you still screw up. So what is the mental process that you go through in order to reduce that uncertainty and really focus on what you're doing? It's a combination of things. I have to know my own limits after I have categorized and organized any and every possibility. In other words, simply said, during an audition, if someone asked me to play a certain thing, and it requires a certain amount of speed with a certain limb pair of mine, my practicing and my preparation, part of that is, 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 is uh, coming to terms with my own limits. Okay. And knowing them, and knowing them with numbers, me actually measuring them. You know, I measure my speeds with a metronome. So I, I already know. And some days are better than others, but um, I know my limits. I have categorized the possibilities. And not just the possibilities of what to play. This is stylistic thing. See, because like in that DVD you have called The Grid, one of the categories is style. It's an option to that. See, because I can play the same thing and sound like three different complete drummers in three different genres. If I, if I give you an example of that. Yes, please. Which might be so fun, you know. I, I, I can play something like um, uh, a Latin kind of style, right?
So that ending thing that I played, one, it's not just, you know, okay, if I, if I play that in a different uh, genre like rock, it, it sounds like two different people. Absolutely. Because of the, the way that I striked. See, with the Latin style, uh, this is, a, oh, I don't want to get way off on this because it's a whole, people spend their whole lives just with the Latin style, just yeah. with the rock style, just with classical, just with all these different styles of playing. It's a whole different language, the way that you strike. So by my gridding out, putting into rows and columns, um, anything and every possibility, these are these are the like the category heads and and, and the and the 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 subcategory sections. I didn't fill anything and everything there is to do just on one page, but I filled in at least the main categories and subcategories. And then the elements, the elements like the elements in the you know, periodic table or whatever, those elements are there's like a periodic table for each and every subcategory. It's very yeah. you know it's it's multidimensional anyway. And that's, that's another thing, you know, early in the discussion, I mentioned layering the senses. This is an example of how I layer my visual senses. I literally, it's like Photoshop in there. I'm seeing, well, I'm seeing my grid, but I'm seeing the three-dimensional version of it. And more than three dimensions, by the way, because when you put time into it, yeah. you get into the Picasso thing. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's like, a, oh, yeah, it's a whole nother. But then what, what does that start to resemble? Look at how a brain works. Look at all the stuff firing off in there. It's this this one affects this one, but it's a maybe this little thing in that back area of the brain is how is that connected to something in the front? But it is, and it it changes that communication with other other things that are firing off. There are so many unique possibilities and groups of neurons going and elect and electrochemical reactions going, zzz, you know, and stuff going on that it's like, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming. I'm glad you do it and I don't. <laughs> but I'm like, well, yet, I mean, I, mean I, I guess I would have fun in a lab. I probably would oh, have a you ball. Oh, you will. You I will. I would have a ball. Well, we would eat very well. I can oh, tell you that. Oh, that's also true. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, <laughs> see, uh, the other thing is like, you, know, you do all this, but it's complex. It's complicated because so I go into an audition. I'm thinking about my limits. I'm thinking about the striking that fits, that fits with those musicians. I'm thinking about the types of expressions that work and don't work because of my history of studying it. There's a lot that goes into this. You don't just walk in and do this. And you don't just play like you. It's like, well, but then they can say, well, you don't fit us. You have to know what you're plugging into. It's like you're linking. It's, a, it's just like a plug that has to fit into the right socket of some kind, you know, or, or a cord that's the right type, you know. You, you can even buy... You can even buy iPhone cords that don't work with the iPhone because they don't have the right, you know, the, the right mechanics to them. Yeah, it's like, yeah. ah, this isn't this isn't an official Apple product. Sorry, but we it's just as dismiss. And you are not using this three dollar item. You're going to buy our thirty five dollar <laughs> item. Yeah. I know the question you ask. I use visualize it and go in, and there's a lot of hope in that. Yes, of course there is, but there's a lot of work that goes into actually being able to do that. So. Um, this brings up, well, that helps a person know what environments to go into and which ones to not bother going into. Yeah, like, yeah. I might know a lot about NFL football by watching it so much and understanding the game, but that is going to have nothing to do with me at my size being on a field, being hit in the rib cage by someone that weighs 200 and 87 pounds charging at me at 12 miles an hour yeah. and hitting me with a very hard piece of plastic. <laughs> I am going to end up like, uh, the wind knocked out of me uh, on the ground or just broken or in the hospital. I, True. So my knowledge is it's like I should not be in yeah. that environment. Yeah, yeah. How does this work in terms of your uh, your drum kit? So let, give, give us some examples about about all of this for those that are thinking of how on earth is this philosophy actually implemented practically so can you give us some examples yeah and I, and I would like everyone to keep in mind this would apply to learning how to throw darts a little bit better uh, or ice hockey but I, 
that's another discussion. But this this is the kind of thing I did. Yeah. Before I got into having to play everything on the drums, I wanted to be a professional ice hockey player as a very, very, very young person at age four, age five, whatever. Even though I was already performing drums, I was like, wow. oh yeah, yeah, but I, yeah, but I, but I can do that. This is why I, I want to be, I want to be Bobby <laughs> or I want to want to play ice hockey. I right, so um, uh, but I would prepare even as a young kid. I would take and um, shoot different. Like a, a weighted puck, a regular puck, a hockey ball, a Milek orange hockey ball, a tennis ball. I'd have to raid my my mother played tennis. I had to raid the tennis balls, you know, and to shoot them into into the corner of the net six hundred times so that I would maybe get eight out of ten, which led to me being a proficient ice hockey player. Anyway, um, and I didn't read any cognitive science books when I was an adult. <laughs> no, when you were five years uh, yeah. old, I doubt it. I, but I knew I have again, like I said, I've, thankfully I've been given the gift of problem solving certain things. Yeah. How does it work? Watch this. All right. I'm just going to describe what's going on in here. Okay. I'm positioning uh, my heels. I've lifted up. It's all good. You can see a little bit. You can see my feet. So one of the first things I do is like, you. I'm addressing the ball. Like I'm going to hit. I guess the golf. So I, I, I sit. I feel my butt on the stool, and I actually, you know, engage it. Uh, I lift my heels up. This gives me connection to all of my balance shifts. So as my my feet are moving around, look at my upper body. If I'm not aware of this, I'm going to be all tipping all over the place. My timing is going to go off. That's the first thing I do. I go sit, lift, turn. I spoke commands. Mm. Sit, feel, lift, turn, look. All right, I'm positioning, shoulders down. I don't want to be doing this and hurting myself. Um, and then if I'm about to play something, uh, playing off the cuff is different than pre-planning something. So I'll pre-plan something. I'll use the right side of my drums. I'll play a simple beat people can follow. And then I'll do some drum fills. Mm -hmm. Now, the key is, what's going on in here to make that happen? Exactly. That's what I want to know. Yeah. Turn to the right. Keep peripheral vision on the left knee. I'm just telling you what I'm thinking. I'm speaking out loud, all right? Lift the left leg, pivot. All of this before I even hit. Like, I'm, I'm swiveling my foot out because that's helping me free this leg up so the lower leg can work. Okay, and I'm like, flex the calf, uh, flex the anterior tib, the calf, do this. I, and this is what I'm thinking. Sorry. Uh, the position and drop shoulders, lift, lift stick tips. I haven't even hit yet. But if I just sit down and I go, all of those things happened. All of those things really happened, but at a very, very fast rate. So now I'm like, pick a subdivision of time. Here a beat. Da, 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 da. Subdivide it into notes. Okay, four. Da, 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 da. Why did I choose this? Da, 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 da. Because I'm doing a demonstration. Da, 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 da. And not everybody knows if I do it's 11s. No one's going to know that. So I think I'll make a decision and do four. Okay, self. Now do four. Chaka daka chaka daka. Divide it into a beat that goes boom, bap, boom, bap, so people can get it. Okay, very good, but keep that left foot engaged. Chaka daka 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 daka. Okay, now open, uh, open the hi hat there. These, these symbols that my left is pressing. Open it in between the beats. Daka 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 daka. Slowing down. Da da da. Open one two three four. So I opened it. It lasted two of these notes, and all of these things. I'm actually processing it very quickly. But to say that it's just random is an impossibility. Yeah. To say that I I just do it. I don't think it's very just. I don't think it's very just to say something that's not true. Even though I think it's true, doesn't mean it's true. Forget about it. It's got to be true or not. That's why we love science to show yes. some of these things here. So, um, uh, so now I'm like this. And I'm like, oh, what am I going to do to make it sound interesting for people listening? Oh, why don't I hit this triangle? I'm seeing the drums. I can see a triangle. It's like a scalene triangle, <laughs> right? And we've got the we've got a, if I can make this an isosceles if I yeah, tip yeah. this one, you know what I'm saying? But I'm seeing like the triangles and the lines and the connections. Now all this is going through my head, and I'm going, all right. Now add add some notes with the foot. Open that and close it. And now when I'm closing, and I'm thinking, flex the calf, 
because both my feet in the air. If my feet are in the air, I'm going to fall over. So I got to like, oh, lean forward, flex my butt, flex the calves, don't tip over. See how much control I have? Oh, hit notes in between the notes with the snare drum. Okay, now do a three note pattern using the tri this triangle, ready? But I'm gonna base it on these notes. Okay, now fit the three notes inside this. So in that example, I played the same pattern. Mm -hmm. But I base those notes on the subdivision of four. And I played that pattern while this was the grid. But then I chose, okay, here's a beat. Fit the three notes in. Change the subdivision from four to three. So, just like, I can't imagine being a non-musician. If I had just done this, might have been able to go, uh, okay, yeah, whatever. It's just drumming, it's a beat, it's stuff. Okay, great. But it's not that coming from me. It's like position, flex the calves, lift up, turn the body. Turn the body, turn the head, but not the trunk. Yeah. Turn the trunk, but not the shoulders. Use the eyes to look instead of turning my whole body. Because if I turn my whole body, my balance is going to go up. I'm just going to use my, I'm gonna use my eyes and look at that hi-hat. So when I do this, I can see it. But I don't even have to look at it. I can use peripheral vision. I can, quote, see that. And if I was blind, I can feel it. I know it's there. I know what the word there is. I know what that means. It's like a bird going to a nest and not using a language to count, like Italian. Oh, I have four eggs. Uno, due, tre, quattro. Three. <laughs> it's like, a, the, no, the bird's not talking Italian or English or anything. The bird knows four, and the bird knows if something got in there and took one of the eggs, and there's now three eggs and not four. <laughs> But yeah. it doesn't use the layer. So you know what the what essence is. You're like, I know what there means in terms of shape, whether I can yeah. see it or not, I can feel it. So I mean you listen, when you ask me a question, <laughs> I know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna answer to the best of my ability to communicate communicate, especially to an an audience that knows, that gets it, it's like something's going on in there, then I wanna speak in those terms. So forgive. That I just didn't say, okay, I'm playing a beat in 4-4 four, four, and hitting this in the high, it's going over here. And then I'm doing the uh, four against three pattern by using a triangle and superimposing three notes on four notes and blah, 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 blah. No one's, you know, it's not going to work. Yeah. I noticed something. Well, I have noticed a lot of things when I see you playing, especially in, like in uh, live settings. Um, and one thing that strikes me like immediately, and I, we, I, we were making this part of our lunch discussion in the lab the other day, is, is that you tend to make a saccade. So basically you move your eyes just before you hit a uh, one of your instruments. So that suggests to me that even at extremely fast speeds, you're anticipating at the millisecond level what's going to happen next. Um, and I can, I can, I'm sure that I can just track every single hit that you make and to see a saccade just immediately before that. So when you're when you're when when you say that you are basically in your mind mentioning like stating whatever is happening is that something that it's predictive of the next step so do you have some kind of window small window into the future of what's going to happen or is it just instantaneous It's a small window okay um is everything occurs Ah, uh, in the simple form, linearly, this, then that, then that, then this, this begets that, begets this, causes this, causes that, causes this. Um, so if anybody wanted to actually see what you're talking about, the YouTube 
um, the YouTube video from Time Warp, the show Time Warp, they put, they used a camera on me that was able to record 5,000 frames per second that was mm -hmm. developed by Jeff Lieberman at MIT, who be became a buddy. Um, they were just filming, because well, I, I had a, quote, you know, world speed record at the time. And um, in the middle of the show, I asked Jeff, I said, Jeff, Put that on my eyes instead of my body. He's like, yeah, but we got to show you, we got to show you play, and you know, it's like use another camera or whatever. Just show my eyes, and that camera captured my eyes, and then right before, and so when they slowed that down, you could see it. I, I used to practice to practice my speed. I figured, well, if I do three notes on each of the drums to and from every drum. I'm going to start on the furthest distance on the kit. So way over here, if I play three notes, but then go way up to over there, well, hold on. First of all, what are my feet doing? Well, I'm going to keep my heels off the ground and my calves flexed rather than just dropping dropping my heels down. Why? Because why would I train, if I'm going to be a, a person who plays drums with a mind limb, a voice limb, and then two hands and two feet, why would I practice just the hands thinking that's reality? It's not reality. I'm going to be thinking about my feet even though I'm not using them. So I'm going to go. I'm just saying that before I go, but three notes on each one. Okay. See how my legs are moving? Yeah. I realize oh, my body's moving. Why don't I slow this down and see what's going on? It's like, oh, I have to turn my trunk. But how yeah. much? So I, what I designed was to turn my trunk as minimally as possible, then move my shoulders as minimally as possible, and then my head and face as minimally as possible to go from here to there. But this is what leads to the eyes. So hold on. Then I realized, wait a minute, why would I wait to turn my body hitting three notes? Uh -huh. I realized, why don't I move the hand that's finished? In uh -huh. other words, if I'm doing three notes, right, left, right, the left only has one hit. I'm getting the heck out of there, right? yeah, like this. Yeah. So the hand that I'm moving becomes the first hand that hits and it's like that's where i get my speed from yeah but so and then i realized well my eyes you know can my eyes move first then my head then my shoulders then my trunk you can change that order up depending on the physical physicality of the situation if that's the right word to use so how how do you keep balance because the the, the thing that you just did yeah at the speed that you usually play these chops yeah I, did, I hit a rim, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how you just don't rush? I mean, it's super easy to start rushing at the speed that you play. That's exactly the whole point. Ah. That's exactly the point, meaning drummers shouldn't... When it takes time to move from here to there, the drummer should be late on the beat. In other words... Watch this, I'm going to move to the other side of the Well, it should take me time to do that. Hmm. But there's some mechanism we have. And this is a, a whole nother discussion and stuff we gotta like get inside of and prove. We gotta we gotta we, we gotta dive into this. It's like, yeah. okay, the body actually recalibrates without thinking at all. I know I'm not thinking about this aspect of anything. I said, I'm gonna turn here, I'm gonna flex this, I'm gonna move that, I'm gonna blah, 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 blah. I'll do three notes, I'll blah, 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 blah. And I'm speaking all these things that are very real, I'm actually doing them. This is something I'm not doing. I am not, because what happens is the body, it, check this out, it knows, it knows that I'm moving a distance. So it overcompensates. Yeah. I see this phenomenon when I'm recording and I can see my wave files and where my hits are. That if I rush the beat play into a click, like, can you hear that? I can. So if, I, if I'm trying to match that. Mm -hmm. 
and my creative mind kicks in to do that little fill. Mm -hmm. Well, my creative mind now has abandoned my job as a drummer and rooting it in, in time. That's yeah. where the layering comes in. I am actually prioritizing my, my beat keeping over my creative sense. That's where there, a lot of musicians will go out of time because they just get creative and speaking this artistic language. Oh, I'm going to go zoop boop ba ding da ka da ka doom da ka dang whack bang zip de doo ba ba da 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 ding ding dang. You know, and I'm going to sing what I'm going to play and I'm going to be an artist and ba ba ba. Yeah, but you just abandon your job to keep time. I'm linking to external time. I have to train myself to link to that. How? Yes. How do you link to? Do I plug my body in? Do I have a cord? How am I linked <laughs> to that thing? There's a, there's a, there's a way to do it. Um, it's the best you can anyway. Yeah. Um, but my creative mind is secondary to my job keeping mind. And that is not, well, that's why I get the jobs that I do because I'm doing the job. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I'm doing the job a certain way with, le with less of my CPU is on all this other stuff. I have a, a question. Does that answer of, your question? Sorry. Yes. That, that actually answers my question. Um, okay. Um, and and th this anticipatory mechanism that you have that you have like mastered is something that I think to me is remarkable because I can hear you on time every time. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just, okay. Um, I have a question about the volume two of uh, Rhythm Knowledge. And when I read about it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Mike is kind of a uh, advanced neuroscientist without even knowing it. Um, and it's, it's this 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 uh, sentence that uh, that I, I I came across that to me is amazing. It says, "Volume two contains five systems to train a human person's pattern recognition skills, and this is the key from the inside out and not the outside in." And I was reading that, and then you had a quote of um, Thomas Aquinas as well about potentiality, and then I said, "Wow," because you know what in neuroscience. The field has been dealing with this idea that is now being abandoned. The fact that brain mechanisms, behavior, and everything work as a uh, information processing kind of thing. So you get information from the outside, and the brain passively uh, represents the environment. That's a very old idea that we don't use anymore. The new idea is exactly what you say, <laughs> is that instead of kind of importing information instead of like enforcing information from outside that can, can come in the form of a lesson, like I'm going to tell you what to play, the brain is more like a creative machine. It's more like an hypothesis testing machine. And perception is not just the passive processing of external information, but more like a hug between the internal activity of the brain and that information that comes from outside. So imagination, hypothesis testing, whatever you want to call it, it's a process that comes from within. So it's an inside out kind of view of perception. And that's exactly what I, what I was getting out of volume two. Am I, am yeah. I, am I? Yeah. 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 And I didn't see, cause I didn't, I, I didn't learn that. I, I mean, excuse me, I didn't learn it from someone else. I didn't read it from anybody. I didn't get it from someone else. I discovered it and was so confident to put it out there that, uh, I was confident to put it out there because I had the information. Well, I had the t my own idea of what scientific method uh, is as far as I was like, I don't have machines hooked up to people. Yeah, yeah. So I have observational data. That's, that's really all I was operating on is observational data, but it wasn't just observational data. It was my perception of it. Like, in other words, let's say there is a radio station and it's, transmitting a song or a talk show. Sorry, but if you don't have a radio and if the radio doesn't work and it's not plugged in and it doesn't have the capability to tune in, you're not going to know what's going on. You know, I've got no clue. So that's, that's the you. That's like, well, you got to have the radio and the, to tune into the radio station. In other words, what the radio station is transmitting is irrelevant it's completely irrelevant yeah. to this to this person without a radio you have been extremely proficient in your teaching so basically all your students loved you and they have learned so much from you and some of them have become better musicians than you and that's exactly what 
we do as as, as teachers uh, we want that from our from our students but do you think that this method because it's wired in an inside out way that's exactly the key why first of all everyone can apply it to the to their own selves and secondly it can be extrapolated to other fields that are not necessarily music yes absolutely and um one example of students um succeeding you know because when you start to get into art there is some truth to someone being better than someone else but you have to split that to well someone's more proficient they actually the statistics are better they can play faster they can do more things they're quote better for some things but the thing is some people as artists are right for a situation and therefore better for the situation if that makes any sense yeah. and that comes from their inside excuse me for a moment <laughs> <laughs> I need my uh, I don't have my box of tissues, so that's you can keep that in. It's fine. <laughs> um, and then it's not a matter of someone even being right or better, but you're used to them. In other words, you know, we all if we all have a favorite band, and um, you're used to the musicians and their sound in that band. To hear that band in a different way kind of wigs out your mind. It's like, well, that's not as good. I like the earlier version of this band. I like this, but that's okay. That's okay, that's okay, but I just wanted to be clear about the, as you said, some are better in this and that. Yeah, in some situations, people are always going to be uh, more the right artist for a situation. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's just, that's normal stuff. And then some are going to increase certain mechanics and, and push a little more, they get a little more speed. This yeah. one's got a little more, uh, you know, ambidexterity. This one has this, 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 this. all these things mean that, but. Anyway, I just I'm, I just have to be be clear about that. So um, sorry about that. You asked me what. So I asked you basically. Do you think the way oh. how you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because um, because that individual person then links to the environment in the way that they link to the environment, and there yeah. are things that are common to everybody. That's yeah. why rhythm knowledge works. I, I and that's why I that's why I don't try to tell anybody who to be. This is like what I meant. I mean, like a person forms themselves of these, it's like they're their own little mini universe and all of these elements and laws of nature exist and you put them together and you form yourself, uh, your, who you want to be as a musician anyway. So that person is going, to, is going to have a different experience in an environment than another person. Just to take an audition, for example, you can have equal skill levels, but then something else kicks in, the, an artist factor kicks in, or, or what I found is this is factor of actually being aware of where you are and what you're doing, which helps you be more yourself or succeed or, or do what's necessary in that. So yeah, from the inside out. Now, um, can I just, give me like two minutes on that. Can I speak of about inside out for two minutes? Okay. Right, of course, that's that's the purpose of this interview, my friend. All right. Okay. So, inside out, learning from the inside out. Okay. What that means is that if you learn from the, let's do the, what it is not. Exactly. Learning from the outside in would be a matter of perceiving a certain move or rhythm. Let me use drums as an example because I happen to be on a drum set. Oh. Right. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> If someone listens to a song and they decide, oh, I would like to get a drum set and play that music. I don't know why, but I, I would like to do that. And maybe this particular thing is played. I'll, make, I'll play something simple. Um, well, when I go in the jazz genre, maybe we have some swinging cats out there, Ooh. man. They want to <laughs> swing. Uh, although the, some of these, uh, this big piece of metal isn't typically the sound used in some jazz settings, but I'm going to make it work. So um, let's say I play this. It's something like that, but it's, you hear a piece of music and it sounds a little more authentic. That's something like that. If I was to have to break that down for a player that didn't have the skill set, mm -hmm. 
not only to the pattern recognition to know what that was and where all the notes go, yeah. uh, or the experience of being a drummer that, well, the list limb does that and you got to step on this and all those mechanics. Um, but it's a, you know, a basic player. It's like, oh, you got to teach me that. Like, okay. So learning from the outside in would mean something like, okay, sing that part. Do, do, da, do, 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 boom. Okay. Play what you're singing. It has worked for probably centuries, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, to get someone to, oh, yeah, yeah but, but that still requires a lot of innate talent um, and pre wired or pre learned things to just to, to be able to manage that. But the thing is, the melody. If that becomes your time as a drummer, like my time is to be consistent with this sometimes. That doesn't mean, you know, because we have accelerandos, we speed up, uh -huh. we slow it down. Uh, people, many people seem to me to give the impression that they completely misunderstand me. They think I'm all about play like a computer, fit all the notes perfectly, like it, with exactly where they're supposed to go like a computer. No, 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 no. Be aware of it. But, um, you know, you can speed up, you can slow down. You can, quote, breathe in the music, whatever. So anyway, the thing about learning from the outside in means you are kind of reversing your processes and you're thinking, you're using the creative part, the singing part, the artistic part, doom, da ba ba da ba boom, da ba boom, ba ding. You're using that as your time, but the thing is those notes fit into time. In other words, if I break this down, this... If I break that down or slow it down a lot, I don't even know what I did, right? I can't even play it that slow. But if I break it down, all of these notes fit onto a a a, a three note bass, like chuck it the duck it the duck it the duck it the the chuck it the chuck it the chuck it the chuck it the duck 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 it they don't have to fit on perfectly. Mm -hmm. So now all the, well, it's good to swing and the notes really out. Yeah, yeah, all those people can be satisfied now because I'm acknowledging it. Saying, yeah, you're right. <laughs> anyway, but basically fits on a three-note bass. So learning from the outside in ignores that. It ignores that and it's just singing and playing what you're singing, which isn't time. Mm. These notes fit into time. Now... The argument of what is musical or not, or what feels right or what feels doesn't for people is very, very um, uh, relative. Mm. Uh, but what is not relative is that, in essence, if you're playing from the, you're learning from the inside out, you're creating that grid first, yeah. check out the, and then fitting the notes on it. And anyone that says, yeah, but that's going to be too mechanical, it's not, you know, swingers and but. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding, it's not. Because if you use dynamics, it's not going to sound like that. Yeah. And, and you can actually swing the swing. You don't have to go. You go. Like in Latin music. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a perfect triplet. You know, you lay it back and practically don't even fit the notes in like. <laughs> that wasn't a triplet, I'll tell you that. But anyway, so yeah, you can manipulate it, but you might as well have the choice of manipula manipulating it. It's like you can do anything with that swing. You can make it, and as long as you study the dynamics and maybe your sounds are more conducive to traditional jazz or something, uh, which this kit is not set for, um, then you're going to be learning f from the inside out. It's going to give you the opportunity to, to not be in the prison of learning the outside in, you only know what you just sang. Yeah, you only can do that. Let's just say someone out there wants to learn a song. Oh, right, you learn it. You play that song. It doesn't mean you develop the skills to play another song. So rhythm knowledge is looking. Here are all the basic skills so you can play any songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the reason why 
It's like, well, just practice all these permutations is because at some point, if you practice the permutations of three, which there are eight of, you have hitting nothing. Check it, check it, check it, check it. One, two, three, four, three. I'm not hitting anything. You're hitting all three. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. You're hitting just the first one. Just the second one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Just the third one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. See what I mean? If you get all those down, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If you learn all these permutations, you're, you can be more creative. Yeah. You can process what's going on and go, oh, with that thing, that melody that I'm singing, it's just a collection of these things over here. It's all that, it's all that rhythm knowledge is saying. But the book isn't saying that means that you will be musical, just like play like a machine and spit out all this stuff. No, 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 no. No, you got to learn about the language itself, the language of jazz, the language of Latin, the language of rock and roll, the language of heavy metal, or if it's speed or if it's classic, the language of classical music, the language of, 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 of Indian music. Especially you get into Indian music, you are going to have to open up large groupings of notes that, that they break down into smaller groupings that go by very, very fast. That's a, that's a, lot, that's a lot to process, which is part of that. Part of one of my systems is to take, you know, the larger groupings and make them not chopped up into smaller groupings. Like taka 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 dimi taka 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 dimi. No 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 no. I'm going a step. I'm going a step below that. In other words, that's still a complex language. You're still going taka dimi taka to taka tiki, and it works. I, I mean, I know it works. <laughs> Do it, and people use it, and it's amazing. Yeah. But, but there's still something that would allow more. More skill. There's something below it. It's like machine language is below the higher level languages in a computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? I remember seeing a Windows uh, computer for the first time. I remember it. I remember <laughs> seeing the, the first Mac when I was a software engineer, and I'm sitting there programming in DOS, which doesn't have any visual. I'm like, what is this window? Oh, forget that. That's, a, that's one of those new, new things. The, the, meanwhile, yeah. pe <laughs> Meanwhile, people that were smart invested in it now don't have to work anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. anyway, anyway. All right, Anyways. so play it from the inside out. It's just that it's that you are operating from this process, setting your body, talking to your body, speaking commands, starting an internal clock so that you can link to external time or be the time yourself. But um, it's about the management of your creativity and placing it because... There are places where if you are creative, it's – as a drummer, yeah, I get it. I get the creativity on the instrument, but if you are the other musicians in the group that have to land their notes on your notes and you are speeding up and slowing down, yeah. you're, making, you're making their life a lot more difficult. Hey, it could be the right thing for the song. Yeah, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. it is or it is not. That's not where I'm going. Again, I am staying away from who – people want to become. I'm not making any judgment. I am no moral judge of another person, what they think is good or bad with this kind of a thing. There are, I, I do have my system of absolutes. That's what leads me here because there has to, there have to be ab absolutes. If you say there's no absolute, is that an absolute? <laughs> is that it an is. absolute if there were it, no absolutes? Well, okay, so, I mean, it's like laws of nature. I don't care what you think or feel or any of that stuff. Uh -huh. E equals MC squared. Just move, get on with it. <laughs> I can clearly see a tension here between people who might say, well, okay, this, this method is kind of interesting, but it's a bit, you know, it sounds a bit like, uh, you know, um, robotic and there is no feel in it. And, and everything about music at the end of the day is just, you know, you need to feel it and it will happen magically. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm making an extreme example yeah. of, but I might see, people fighting you on that based on that argument. Do you consider it an argument at all, first of all? And second, how would you address the tension? It is an argument. Argument is good. Just let's look the word up. A lot of words now are purposely perverted to manipulate people. And you know what? Changing a definition of a word does not change essence. It doesn't matter. Meaning, someone's to say that is the argument is good. The argument is good, but the argument might have a limit. Mm. 
You know, that's what I remember. I take out of calculus. Is yeah, this, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, but but this is like uh, someone asked you, well, how do you, how do you use calculus in the drums? I'm like, I'm not using an equation. I'm not like writing out a no. What is cal what is the calculus? What is it? It's the dividing of 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 of, of distance over time into slivers that you can manage and make predictions to land this rocket on the moon. You just like it's just you just yeah. doing it to be it's able a to system. make predictions. Yep. Yep. The argument about all that has to break. See, the bad thing about it is it breaks down at a wall where where relativism. Hmm. becomes the fight and this it, it, it's, it's, that's just broken you know no 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 because when you find the truth to something the relativism goes away but people don't want that they don't want to admit it they don't want to let go of the thing they think but the thing is they don't know everything yet you know it's like um uh, and that's where my compassion is that's where my empathy is that's where when someone has that opinion i engage with them and try to help them out I try to say, whoa, 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 just, uh, I get it. And from your perspective, one would say that is a correct conclusion, that what you said and whatever, uh, and that they, they believe it's the truth. It's like, oh, all right, I get it. I understand what you're seeing. I get it. I completely get it. However, you're not accounting for everything, you're only accounting for some of the things. Let's talk about what you're not accounting for and then put it back into your mix and see where you are with that. But yeah. you got to allow it to happen. But the human nature is, oh, no, 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 no. You put the earbuds in. You walk out of a room. Yeah. My answer is that's the, that's the breakdown, is you're going to hit this wall, and and what is in a person's mind becomes the whole world, uh, and it's not aware of certain things that are true and that exist. Like, okay, so they don't even listen. Like I'm, I have said numerous times here, if if the view of this is like I'm basically becoming some sort of machine that can that can that can perceive, process and play anything, well, look, no, no, every human has limits. First of all, no human being can actually execute with the with the efficiency that you know an AI could just repeating the same thing over and over. We daydream. There's no possible way. Even if I, I can't even play this for, for uh, X amount of minutes or even seconds perfectly. Like, but my method says, okay. I'm just I am using software engineering. And mechanics as a metaphor, as an example. Yes, exactly. I'm using them just as an example. I'm not telling a human being to be this way because a human being can't be this way. I'm actually saying it. Yeah. And I, yeah. I say it in my system, but that could be... My, my system has been described to people that haven't, they haven't read it and they're yeah. making assumptions making assumptions, oh, and that's very computerized and robotic and blah, 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 unmusical. And it's like, oh, fuck, crying. Yeah. Out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah. not what it is. Like, I know. Don't, don't, to me, it is like, yeah, but actually my, my brother threw this out at me about you know, the breakdown in arguments. He said, certain people are transmitters only. They don't receive. They don't receive anything. And that, that's in, in the heart. And people don't want to open up to the possibility that, oh my gosh, maybe I got it wrong. But I'm just saying, but that, that skips back to when you, when the, one of the first things I said in this interview was when people asked me to teach, I said no, because I didn't want to get it wrong. I wasn't afraid to admit that I didn't know. Yeah. And so as I grow to this day, I'm like, all right, well, maybe I didn't get something right with that. Oh, let's figure out what it is. And I will change my tune when I, when I, it can acknowledge, oh my gosh, this principle isn't right. It's a flaw. But it's not, as you know about the scientific method, if I actually used it, then it's not going to be wrong yes. because it withstood the method. It's like eventually you have to sit there and... Exactly. And and it's it's the classic, I would say, misconception or conf uh, confusing the map with the territory. The map is not the territory. You, the territory is something that you can describe with a map. And the maps maps can be we can have a lot of maps to describe something and but that doesn't make 
the phenomenon, the one, the thing, the explanation of, of it. So here is exactly the same issue that people sometimes don't want to learn new things and they just don't want to realize that the same phenomena can be seen, analyzed, or described with, in multiple ways. They, they just don't like that. But yeah, I know they, they, do? they don't. But all I know is that this system, it is a map, in other words, to describe, to help get some sort of um, understanding and use of the territory, which is the human person and the environment. So the human person is the territory, the environment's the territory. Rhythm knowledge is simply one of the maps that you can use to get a to get a visual on, to get perspective on it, to you know, to perceive what is true, what's not true, what's possible, what's not possible. It doesn't tell you, and I'll repeat it now for what the third or fourth time. It doesn't tell you what's better or not better musically. It doesn't tell you who to become, what to like, or what not to like. It just says, without the radio, you're not going to receive what the radio station's playing. So if someone's, if you listen to music and it does this, So if it's like, so I can listen to that and go, I don't like that. My reaction is, okay, great. I did. I did like that. But you might like that. Very much. Else, yeah. But you have a right to, don't you? I, of course I do. But so I'm not going to does... claim that uh, you're better or worse than any other. That's the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if someone doesn't like it, they can't tell you that you can't like that. Yeah. Correct. There's different forms of music that make sense to certain people, that make them feel a certain way, that don't make other people feel a certain way, but they have just as much of a right to enjoy that as the other person does to not enjoy it yeah. and enjoy what they enjoy. I'm just sitting here in the middle as a teacher with all of these people coming to me trying to relate to them. That's all I'm trying to do is say, okay, let me, let me break this down so that what is in here is always true. Yeah. Because it doesn't open up those doors of, 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 of likes and dislikes and relativism and all of it. It doesn't do that. It just says E equals MC squared. Let's break it down. Good. Take it and go and uh, Great. figure it out. So to finish up, I think this is a very, very powerful message, Mike. Um, I want to know <laughs> what's happening with your forthcoming uh, new solo album. Because there is something going on there. And uh, what are you working on? Are we going to see it soon? Um. Oh. <laughs> well, all right. First of all, what am I working on? I have a cork board. It has lots of goals, sub-goals. I have a main goal with me and me as a person. And what do I, by the time my life is over, what is this, what am I aiming to be and do at that moment? Um, okay, so all these things that I'm doing, so you mentioned my solo album. What that means is that I've constructed music where I wrote every single note on all of the instruments and wrote wow. all of the words and did everything. Wow. And then got it to a certain point and had my version of these other instruments replayed by people that do that for real and saying, okay. And so that, that, that's what that means is that I, is that I wrote it and then I have now people that have come in and replayed it and uh, put a little bit of their spin on it. Just like, oh, well, because yeah. I acknowledge that a person is there, you know, they're not me. Yeah. But yeah. They're, they're playing the right. You play this part here, this is in this key, these are the notes, this is the riff, do it this many times, play it uh, with that. And, gonna, and then I'm going to have someone else make the sound of the genre that I want this to be. So that's what it is. So I made this solo album. Um, and I am in the stage of examining how it's going to get to the world. I see. And okay. I, have to, I have to work with people on how to do it to that next step to transmit it so people can receive it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. 
Um, and when are you touring again with the uh, with Dream Theater? Is it is it happening again in in January or February? I I saw something on the website. It's January and February. Okay. Uh, I don't even I don't even know the dates. I just like ah, right, yeah, I get ready just... in early January of and then course. I'll be back in late February. I'm like, okay, so I know I know how to. That's the, my whole thing is how long are we going? What's what's happening here? How do I pack my suitcase? <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So I guess I'm gonna see you on tour uh, if you're coming to the UK. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I'm not gonna make you walk the entire London again, probably because it's not gonna be London. Oh yeah, we're gonna play some different places, so cool. I, I I don't have a clue right now. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't have a clue. We will find out. So I just want to thank you for this, Mike. I think it's been amazing. Um, thank you for the demonstrations. Thank you for the knowledge, and for everyone who wants to know more about Mike. We're going to have all the proper links uh, down below in the description. MikeMangini.com, RhythmKnowledge.com. For those who are interested in learning the method, everything is there. For those who are not drummers, for those who are not even musicians and want to learn the building blocks of how changing behavior works, just go into the website and check it out. Thank you very much, Mike. It's been a great pleasure. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure on my part. I always learn when we speak. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.